are suffering, my dear. There's not enough scotch in the world for that. <laughs> Shirley, what are you writing now? A little novella. I'm calling none of your goddamn business. <laughs> well, you were invited to stay here for a few days until we can find a place. Shirley has these bouts. She's gone sick in the head. I read your story. What are you doing in here? It made me feel thrillingly horrible. Do you know what it's like to have a secret? What are you up to? That girl, what do you think? Trite and a bit trashy, but uh, yeah, give it a go. I like you, Rosie. Can I trust you? I feel like we're in the Scottish play. On the verge of madness. What will happen? I can see their secret looks. Freud would have had a field day. I'm counting down from three. Three, two, one. What becomes of your dear heroine? What happens to all lost girls? They go mad. Um, so then, so yeah, we'll get right into it, uh, Josephine. So I just wanted, the first question is, are you normally drawn to stories that push the perception of reality? Definitely. That's all the stories I'm interested in. I love, I love stories that kind of move between, you know, reality and imagination or interiority and exteriority. And I think this one mm -hmm. is definitely um, in that category. I think that's one of the things I was most excited by about it is that, you know, you're, you're, you're having Shirley's visions, which is, I'm, I'm like, if we're going to be inside of anyone's mind, Shirley Jackson's mind is a good place to go. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Like, uh, I know the first time I ever, you know, been, was, it was back in school. I was in school and uh, they had us read the short story, The Lottery. You know, that's like the, one of the number one things coming mm. in. And just seeing, I'm like, I know, I remember reading it and I said, who is this person? I'm like, where the hell did they come up with this? This is the yeah. thing too. And so like, what about you? Like, did you, did you, were you introduced to Shirley Jackson very early on or was this something that just happened naturally? Well, yeah, I had read the lottery and I guess in high school. And then mm -hmm. I read the, we have always lived in the castle and, and had was really blown away. And was like, I need to go read everything she wrote. I had, and I read, we've always lived in the castle right before I got the script actually. So it was amazing timing. And um, so then I read a few more of her, of her works before I, pitched and then got the job and then obviously read as much as I could before we went into the shoot so um just yeah steeped myself in Shirley but she's yeah it's a happy pathway to go down oh yeah totally no I I, I love everything about the movie by the way so <laughs> oh good yay I, I too much gushing but yeah I I enjoyed everything especially those uh, like the visualizations of like the dream sequences and all that so that kind of like runs into my next question when you said in a previous statement that you know the all those visuals were ever evolving right so did you find any of them in particularly challenging for you at one point or another or did they just come off the page <laughs> the visuals of the film uh yes yeah, so, so like uh you know some of the dream sequences any of them came off a little challenging for you at all or you had we a had a really funny experience there's a dream sequence that takes place in a bathtub yes. and i guess the art department had tested this you know it's like a warmer so you fill the tub you use a garden hose because the tub was not a working tub it was a, it was just a it was just like a, a bathtub that we plugged the bottom of but it was a it was a period tub that we'd like stuck into a room it was not a bathroom yeah. um and so, <laughs> but so they had to fill the tub with like, you know, with a, they were going to fill the tub with this garden hose and then heat mm -hmm. water with this, um, like heating stick. Okay. For some reason, the day that we went to shoot, they filled it with the garden hose, the mm -hmm. heating thing did not work and it's freezing. And to shoot a scene, you can't have your actress sitting in freezing cold water for like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, while you're shooting, you know, multiple takes of a long, really intense, complicated with special effects scene. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
I just remember, I mean, that was one, I mean, that's a sort of practical reason that a visual was difficult, but, but then when we did get shooting, we were like, wham, wham, wham. We went right, you know, we were just, we all knew what we wanted to do because we have, z we had zero time. We waited like two and a half hours to get that bathtub warmed up. And then we had like 10 minutes to shoot the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but, you know, but I think the visuals in general was, it was a really exciting conglomeration of like, Sarah's vision, mm -hmm. um, maybe some ideas that I had had, and then obviously the visions that Shirley has in all of her mm -hmm. books. So, um, so we just got to play a, a lot with the with the way that we use the visuals. No, that's awesome. That's the magic of Hollywood. Yeah, I would I would have mm -hmm. just thought that was a working tub. That's hilarious. That, yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Um, so what, what experiences will, like, did you take from this film that you want to, you will definitely bring into your future projects? That's a great question. I, I mean, I had pretty incredible collaborators across the board on this mm -hmm. film. You know, every department head was a genius. And then also every, um, uh, our cast, our cast was, you know, they were next level good, like just unbelievably good. So mm -hmm. I think they, that, you know, that's, you know, you hope that you get that kind of cast in every movie that you make. I, you know, I'll just cross fingers that, <laughs> that that would happen. But, um, yeah, but I think, um, you know, actually, well, this was one of the first times, obviously it was the first time I, I directed a script I hadn't written. Mm -hmm. It was also one of the first times I worked with a hair and makeup department. And that was a really interesting learning experience, just that you, that I, I had never communicated with that department really. I had never had a department for that. So, um, and it and so useful and actually in this film in a period film it's a really big storyteller is the hair and makeup it's really telling your time period and um and then we wanted we had these story kind of concerns about how rose and and shirley sort of like almost uh shared an identity and so the ways that their hair and makeup looked at the beginning and at the end were really telling a story about about them and their journey so uh i think that was a learning experience that just that how early you can kind of shape that reality and, and how early you can start those conversations around hair and makeup. No, that's awesome. That's cool. Like, I, I know, like, uh, seeing other, like, making of the films and everything, they always say, like, oh, if our, like, you know, if our hair and makeup didn't say such and such, you know, we would have put them out with, like, a tank top, uh, and that would have been yeah. completely wrong, and we would have been crucified for it, and it's just crazy. So it's, like, little things like that make up yeah. like, a little difference. Big difference. Uh, but, uh, and since we're, but since we're running short on time, uh, I have a final question. Um, you, you did also previously state that, um, I'm going to quote you here, <laughs> uh, in Encountering her work was like finding a map towards becoming a kind of artist I would like to be. So mm. daring, intimate, structured, yet dreamlike. Uh, do you feel that this project uh, brought you closer to that type of uh, creator? Oh, wow. Well, I guess I feel like every project I've made, um, I learn more about myself. I don't know that I'm that I'm getting better, but I'm learning more. I mean, I hope I hope that the work that I make is... is um, is strong in different ways every every project but i think that my i think i definitely learned a ton making this movie and also learned a ton about storytelling from shirley and from all the research that we had to do it and also from working with great writer sarah and and these incredible storytellers of the actors and also our our editors mm -hmm. i i feel like i learned uh, so much about how do you get inside of someone's mind and and do justice to their reality um and how do you also res uh, share that with an audience in the most effective way. So I think there were a lot of layers of learning on this. And um, yeah, I hope I did get a little more structured and dreamlike. Yeah, all I know, I was bl blown away. I, I, I loved <laughs> everything, the visuals were crazy. And when I was speaking to Sarah earlier, I told her the same, I'm like, I don't know how you wrote those on the page. And uh, definitely the collaboration was there. The, the movie was incredible, I loved it. Oh, awesome, Ed, thanks for saying that. I'm so glad that you responded to it. No, it definitely did. Well, I, that's what I go to the movies for. I want to go to the movies to be kind of freaked out, but at the same time, like drawn in every scene. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, thank you so much, Josephine, for the, uh, the interview. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, uh -huh. Ed. Thank yeah. you. All right. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.